This week, Apple released new software for the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and other devices. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what's new with tvOS 18 for the Apple TV and HomePod. We'll also take a look at what's new within the Home app. Overall, there's some cool features, not a huge update, but they've added one of my new favorite features for the Apple TV. Now, in order to take advantage of the new tvOS 18 on your Apple TV, you're going to need to have an Apple TV HD 2015, Apple TV 4K 2017, and Apple TV 4K Generation 2 or Generation 3. Now, when it comes to HomePods, any of them are gonna work. Now, to install the update on your Apple TV, you would go under Settings, go to System, go to software update, select the update, and just wait for it to install. Now for HomePods, you would go into the Apple Home app, go to your home settings, scroll down to software update, and by default, it should automatically update. I know Apple isn't always the quickest with their automatic updates, so you can click on it and see what's happening. You can see uh, what has been updated recently. Just make sure you're on 18. Now, first new feature with Apple TV is a new insight feature. Now, this is similar to Amazon's X-Ray feature, where you can bring up information about the cast and even music that's playing. And from this inside screen, you could even select the music and add it to your library. That's a cool feature if you're watching a movie that has a good soundtrack and you don't know who the artist is. Now, I'm not gonna drag this out before I just share my favorite feature. I hope you don't leave after I share this, but if you do, you got the jam right up front. This new feature is automatic subtitles. I love this, it works great. I mean, why do we rewind? It's usually because we didn't hear something Thin, uh, because maybe somebody was staring at their phone instead of paying attention. So then we have to skip back and we get to hear this. Not that I know anybody that does that. Or you may skip back because you just can't understand what they're saying because the volume is too low. Now when you hit skip back, no matter how much time you skip back, subtitles are going to come on for that period of time, which is perfect. If you couldn't understand them, you can at least read it. Also, when you hit the mute button, subtitles automatically come on. Really a great feature all around, especially with the shows where the voice or dialogue is just way too low. Now, this next feature helps you with that too. It's called enhanced dialogue. The way Apple describes it is that Enhanced dialogue leverages machine learning and computational audio to deliver greater vocal clarity. Now this is a feature you do need to go under audio and video in the settings and you do need to enable this. But once you have it on, it makes the vocals a little clear. I've been using enhanced dialogue and haven't really noticed the difference, but I think that's the point. You shouldn't notice it's working because you should be able to hear everybody in the scene. And since I could hear everybody, I'll just assume it's working and it's magic fine. What's great is you don't need to hook the Apple TV up to a sound system or home pods to enjoy this. Instead, Enhanced dialogue can work with the TV speakers. Now, according to Apple, HomePod users should expect even better clarity with an update that's coming later this year. Another update to the Apple TV interface is to Fitness Plus. Here's what the new one looks like. I have no idea what the old one looks like. Judging by how I look, I probably should have been opening the fitness app more so I did know what it looks like. Now Fitness Plus has a new look and includes some more personalized suggestions for workouts. Next, I wanna show you a couple of Apple TV remote tips. Starting first with the Apple Watch, in the latest update, you can go to the remote app and you can use the crown to adjust the volume and you can click on the three dots and you'll see additional options such as turning on subtitles. It's great, you don't have to get up for the remote, you just control it right from your watch. Now an even better tip for the remote, it is using your iPhone as a remote. What'll happen is if you swipe down from the top from the control panel, you hit the remote, you then choose which TV you want, and you power on the TV. What makes this better than using the remote is that it automatically signs into your account. So even though it's an extra step to swipe down, select it, power it on, it's quicker than powering it on, going to the users, switching over to yours, and then 
seeing your stuff. Another new update to the Apple TV is with the new screensavers. There's a new portrait screensaver. Makes your portraits look all cool. It'll even uh, move the object in the foreground, in front of the clock. Now, if you own a projector, you might appreciate this. There's now support for 21 by nine projectors. And if you aren't familiar with that, typically when you go into a theater and you watch a movie that's on a projector, it's in that wider format. And if you own a projector, you're able to project at that wider format and take advantage of it with the Apple TV. Now, a couple of FaceTime updates to the Apple TV. One is you can take an iPad or an iPhone and you can set it up as a continuity camera for the Apple TV. If you have an extra phone or an extra iPad, you mount it uh, below your TV or above it, and now you can FaceTime anytime you want on your Apple TV. Another new feature with FaceTime is live captions. So whoever's speaking, you'll see what they're saying right on the screen. I know a couple of relatives that might be able to use this feature. There might be a little less, huh? What was that? What did you say? I'm sure you can relate, folks. Now this next update works with the HomePods and the Apple TV. It's AirPlay Spatial Audio. Now you can AirPlay from an iPhone or an iPad uh, content that has spatial audio. So if I send a movie from my iPad to the Apple TV, if that movie has spatial audio, I'll get that surround sound feel as I'm watching it off the Apple TV. It also applies with music. So if you want to send music over to your home pods, you'll get that spatial audio that you wouldn't normally get unless you were streaming directly from the Apple TV. You could take advantage of that spatial audio with Apple TV, with the HomePods, and supported third-party speakers. This next update is for both HomePods and Apple TVs. It brings a faster Siri, and that's by processing more requests locally instead of sending them to the cloud. Anytime you could keep your stuff controlled locally, it's only gonna make it quicker. Apple doesn't say specifically what request will be handled locally. I'll take any local processing we could get. Now for the HomePod, you have that in enhanced dialogue there too. So if you are streaming something directly from the HomePod, the vocals will be clear. And again, apparently with an update coming up, that's going to get even better. Now let's talk about some new smart home updates. There is a new guest mode that's available so your guests can control certain smart devices. For example, smart locks, garage doors, and security systems. But they will only be able to access those things if they're at your house. There's no remote access to worry about from your guests. What's nice too is that you could revoke it at any time. It makes it great if you have a short-term rental or visitors, they can always arm the alarm or unlock the smart lock and then when their stay is over, take it right back. Apple Home also gains vacuum support with the latest 1.2 Matter update. So you'll be able to use Siri to issue commands to your vacuum or work it into automations. Another new smart home feature coming out is ultra wideband lock support. Now, if you're not familiar with the ultra wideband chip, in most Apple devices, there is a U1 chip that is a very precise precision locating chip. So with this thing, you can go to an AirTag within inches. Now the idea is that with supported locks, that when you're within six feet of the door, it'll pick up the ultra wideband chip out of your phone or your Apple Watch, and it'll unlock the door for you. The ultra wideband's way better than Bluetooth because it's more precise. So instead of being somewhat near the door and it, the lock picking up a Bluetooth signal and unlocking when you don't mean it to, this is only gonna unlock when you're really at the door. Now, another feature that Apple introduced, they announced that you'll be able to pick which Apple TV or HomePod is your home hub. The way Apple has been doing it is that it randomly assigns a HomePod or Apple TV as the home hub while all the other devices hang out in standby mode. The problem with that is sometimes it picks the weirdest device that's furthest away from everything and it makes it the hub, or it picks an older device after I bought a brand new Apple TV. Well, with this update, instead you can just pick 
the one device you wanna use. In my case, it's the Office Apple TV because I do all my beta updates on it and it's the one I use most. There are some of the new updates that are out. If I miss some, let me know in the comment section. Also, let us know which update is your favorite. Now, if you made it this far, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to check out future videos. Next, check out this video here for some more Apple TV information and this one up here for some HomePod uses. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.